Here's a few news stories I thought were interesting. So Walmart is being sued, claiming that they have surveillance cameras in Walmart and they are using facial recognition without telling the customers and connecting to Clearview. And Clearview is a very controversial company. It's come up a lot in the news. Clearview scraped Facebook and the internet to find pictures of everybody and archives it all. And so you can take a photograph of anybody and send it to Clearview and they can identify them. And they're using it for a lot of things that are probably illegal, like the Ukrainians are using it to, rec to identify dead Russian soldiers, which is technically a violation of the Geneva Convention. And uh, anyway, the cops were using it for a while and then there were huge protests. So there's a lawsuit claiming they're doing that. Walmart responded and said they just tested Clearview with a trial version and decided not to implement it so they aren't using it. So we'll see. But anyway, um, it's a very important case because facial recognition is really fraught. I mean, about four or five years ago, everybody was developing facial recognition, Microsoft and many other companies. And about two years ago, they all pretty much abandoned it. They pretty much discovered that facial recognition is very dangerous. The legal problems are huge. The things are not very accurate, so they misidentify people and so on. So uh, people have pretty much moved away from facial recognition. But of course, it, a lot of people like it. And I guess Walmart likes it. I'm not quite sure what they would need it for, maybe to uh, target ads to customers or identify shoplifters or something. I know why the police use it, because they often have you know, just a video of somebody they want to know who it is to arrest them. But I don't really know why Walmart would have to do it. Anyway, now supposedly, if you board airplanes now, they do it with facial recognition. Maybe, yeah, for anti-theft, yeah, so they recognize threat. But the other thing is, um, I've heard there are some airlines where you don't need a boarding pass anymore. They just recognize your face and let you on. So um, some companies are using it, but uh, most people that have tried it end up discovering huge problems and having to quit. Anyway, so this is interesting, although the, the article is behind LinkedIn's paywall. You have to have a LinkedIn account to see it. But apparently Patreon has fired their entire security team. And somebody says they have a job offer to hire a new one. So apparently they're firing everybody and replacing them all without any transition period. So that, that uh, would suggest that something is very wrong at Patreon, something very wrong with security or something very wrong with management. So we'll see. Yeah, the AI is bad at recognizing, yes, bad at recognizing African-Americans and other things. That's the problem. Many reasons why if you deploy facial recognition, you will probably end up in legal trouble pretty soon. Um, so... In San Francisco, you can get a parking spot if you have $90,000 lying around. So apparently this is a fairly common price to pay for a parking spot in San Francisco. <laughs> These normally go to the residents of this building for a low $300 a month, but someone is subletting it out for $90,000. You can have a parking spot in downtown San Francisco. So I think it's a whole lot cheaper to ride BART. Anyway. Is it here? What's that? Is it for you? They don't make it clear. I would hope forever. <laughs> anyway, uh, I don't know if they're going to get it. So their tokamak is the main way people make fusion generators, and tokamaks are very big, big things. And this strange-looking thing is the improved miniaturized tokamak. By having these weird, twisty magnets, They've carefully planned exactly how to have the right magnetic field to contain the plasma. And this thing is uh, past the first few tests, and in the next week or two, they're going to run at full power. This will supposedly efficiently, and in a relatively small and inexpensive device, create a st steady plasma at 100 million degrees centigrade, which is what you need to make fusion generators. So this is one. The tokamak also claimed that they were able to uh, keep gas at 100 million, plasma at 100 million degrees for 20 seconds now, which has never been done before. So, you know, fusion is moving along. There's still nothing resembling a fusion generator that actually produces net power, and that's certainly years away, but they are progressing. So, someday, maybe in 10 or 20 years, we'll actually have fusion power plants, and that would be great. They produce a lot of power and almost no waste, no pollution, no carbon in the air, no radioactive byproducts. Sounds great. Of course, the problem is the easiest thing to fuse is tritium, and there is very little tritium on the Earth. So they say this is all kind of pointless because we're already out of the fuel they need. Anyway, uh, we'll see if they can find a better fuel, a more common fuel to use instead or something. Um, yep, someone has a car, but he commutes because of all the parking. Yeah, yeah. 
mean, driving in San Francisco, just like driving in any big city, is kind of crazy. Um, so this is pretty interesting. This is Coe. Coe uh, transforms your voice. So if you listen to this one. This is like the key question, right? Because the, the thing that's different about virtual and hopefully augmented reality compared to all other forms of, of digital platforms before is this feeling of presence. Okay, that is the real voice of Mark Zuckerberg. Here it is turned into a narrator voice. This is like the key question, right? Because the, the thing that's different about virtual and hopefully augmented reality compared to all other forms of, of digital platforms before is this feeling of presence. That makes him sound older and deeper. Here's the female. But this is like the key question, right? Because the, the thing that's different about virtual and hopefully augmented reality compared to all other forms of, of digital platforms okay. before is this feeling of presence. Uh, what'd you say? Computer-generated voice? Yeah, modified. They take his voice and they modify it to make it sound like a different voice and then play it at the right speed so it matches the video. And so uh, they're, they're proud of this. This is uh, Koei. They're a new technique to make modify voice. And here it but is. This is like the key question. Turned into like right, a the, anime voice. The thing that's different about virtual and hopefully augmented reality compared to all of So anyway, that's, um, that's their plan. You can modify your voice in a sort of professional way so it still matches the video and so on. Yeah, here we are. This is a people that got 100 million Kelvins for 20 seconds in a tokamak. So uh, that's in South Korea. They did that. And that other device is somewhere else. So there's two, two groups using different techniques closing in very rapidly on making real fusion that works. Uh, well, the U.S. is involved in the South Korean one. They have a lot of people working together. I and I think they're doing one in MIT too. There's a bunch of them. They're doing some in Russia too, and I think China's doing it. I mean, many people are doing it. No, yeah. They built. Oh, I don't think anybody built a fusion reactor. All they built is these prototypes. Yeah, which they're just proof, but they're nothing. They're not. They're not real power plants at all. All they do. No. Is, is test the concept. None of them are anywhere near making enough power to bend, have net power. All of them are wasting power still. But they're getting much better. So hopefully they'll have a power plant that actually generates power in maybe 10 or 20 years. So apparently, these guys did a meta-analysis and they found that many cancers, like 18 different cancers, are increasing a lot for young people, people under 50. And they haven't figured out why. And they have excluded the possibility there's just more screening and more detection of it. They say it really is more cancers. And they find that most of them have to do with digestion. You see breast, colorectal, esophageal, and so on. Um, and so they think it probably has to do with our changes in diet. Genetic you know. modified food, of course. Yeah, well, but they don't blame genetically modified food, although that is, I suppose that's a possibility. What they say is uh, from, it started in the 1990s. And that's when they say people's um, diet change significantly. Um, yeah, the rise of highly processed food. But they're thinking diet, lifestyle, weight, environmental exposures, microbiome. But they're guessing, you know, this is a meta-analysis looking at many published papers showing cancer is in fact increasing a lot, but they don't know why. Um, anyway, uh, so there's a malaria vaccine that works. This is the first one that's worth a damn. They had one a few years ago that was very ineffective. The new one, you have to take four doses and then it's 80% effective. And that is enormous because um, malaria, this is what something Bill Gates put out last week, the most deadly animal on earth is the mosquito because it spreads malaria. This single disease is worse than all the diseases put together by in terms of the number of people infected and the number of people that die from it. So. Uh, and this, not only that, this vaccine is cheap and easy to make, so they can provide what's needed, 100 million doses a year, which they need to send mostly to Africa. And so it uh, can be made for a few dollars, and therefore they could uh, vaccinate people. It kills more than 400,000 people a year, even with all the modern anti-mosquito things like bed nets, insecticides, and drugs. So this vaccine should save, you know, something like 80% of those people. Where's what? Oh, it's not using RNA. Um, I don't know if they tell me much about how it works. They said it, their approach is more effective. Um, is it wider space? Uh, well, no, no. In fact, this is the problem. Malaria is a parasite. 
It gets in your blood, then it moves into your liver, and it moves to different parts of you. It's actually like, like a little worm crawling through your body. And so um, they, it's very complicated, and the, their breakthrough is they decided what part, of the, what part of its life cycle to attack. And they're attacking the malaria when it first enters your body, before it gets to your liver. And that turns out to be very effective. So that was what they said the big issue is. Um, the big issue has been uh, figuring out what part of the life cycle of the malaria parasite to attack. And they figured out what part to attack. So, um, what's that? It's a protein. It's, uh, I don't know if the virus is a protein. I'm, it's um, a protein. from malaria and hepatitis B, yeah, using that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they're using proteins. That's uh, probably what they're targeting. But anyway, um, they don't give you much technical detail of how the, it's not using RNA though, I know that. Anyway, yep, that's a good question. And I see some uh, material science, you say somebody has a link here. This looks like it might be about uh, the tokamak, no, material science simulation, extreme performance, all right, what is this? Is this uh, fusion or what? Lawrence Berkeley National Lab, that's uh, right here in Berkeley, first electronic excited, more than that many operations per second, mixed precision, I guess some kind of GPU. Oh, some kind of calculation. Mixed precision method, first electronic structure simulation. Oh, some kind of powerful computer. 4,400 GPUs to perform a simulation. Oh, okay. A uh, new sort of... I don't think it has anything to do with COVID. Simulation of the SARS-COVID. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. It's simulating. Okay, that's interesting. Right there. Spike proteins. Well, I'm not finding it, but anyway, it's some first, kind of first, a... First, 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 right there, first, 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 first. Submatrix method, chemical calculations, yeah. Sentence. Where? The first sentence. The first it's sentence. Like, right there, the paragraph. Scientific sentence. Oh, you said simulated SARS. Okay. Yeah. All right, fair enough. Anyway, that's pretty good. If, if I'll make uh, this to my links. I appreciate the uh, tip. They've done, uh, all they've done is have a new way to use a bunch of GPUs to simulate a protein, but that's cool. But, but I already sold their, their medical computer. Yeah, that's right, using GPUs. So it's not clear that it's a new kind of computing, but it's still a pretty good thing to do. All right, I'm just saving that for later. All right, well, that's enough news, I think. Let me stop this recording. Got to dig down to it.